A traditional Korean meal was eaten on the floor, usually ondol. Each person had a spoon, a pair of chopsticks, and a bowl of rice. Many common side dishes were served. There were two kinds of royal meals, surasang, everyday meal, and daejeon osang, a special banquet. These banquets were reserved for Chinese envoys, royal weddings, and the Queen Dowager's 61st birthday. On the 61st birthday of the mother of Zhongzhou, it is documented that 70 different dishes were served. They were stacked 45 centimeter high. The king was served 29 different dishes on that day. Everyday meals, surasang, were served at mid-morning, around 10 a.m., early afternoon, and late evening. In the early morning, the king ate rice gruel. Usually, kings ate four times a day. What was served during a surasang? There was rice, six basic dishes, and 12 side dishes, panchan, called chop. Only the king and the queen could be served 12 chop in the kingdom. Yang Ban had three, five, seven, or nine chop served to them. Rice was either white or red. Red rice was boiled in water previously used to boil red beans. The six basic dishes that were always served along rice were tang, a soup, juchi, or jjigae, chimche, or kimchi, jang, jim, san, and jangol. For tang, or soups, there were dozens of possibilities. Two were served to the king. Two juchi, palace term for jjigae, soup or stew, was served. One was tojang juchi. It was seasoned with soybean or red pepper paste. The other was malgun juchi. It was clear and seasoned with salt, soy sauce, or pickling brine. Chimche, the palace term for kimchi, was usually mild with a subtle yet rich taste. At first, red peppers weren't used as they were introduced to Korea in the 16th century following Japanese invasions. After these events, red peppers were used in royal cuisine following the king's preferences. Many jang were served to the king, for example, soy sauce, soy sauce mixed with vinegar, and small crabs pickled in soy sauce. A jim, or sun dish, was served. Jim was animal meat spiced and slowly steamed in a sauce until most of the sauce was absorbed by the meat. Sun were steamed stuffed vegetables coated with starch. Jungol was meat, vegetables, or seafood cooked in a pot of boiling stock. The pot was placed on a portable stove or brazier and cooked slowly. There were different chefs for different dishes one for steamed rice, one for fish dishes, one for rice cakes, etc. The master chef was called Bangam and was a male. Court ladies were in charge of preparing everyday meals. Professional male cooks took charge of royal feasts. It's worth noting that the queen and crown prince were assigned a private kitchen, different from the king. Utensils were usually made of silver, brass or ceramic, and stored in a special office and handled by a palace slave. Maid servants and eunuchs would arrange the tables for the king and queen. The king's meal was served on three tables. A large round table in front of him, Dewan Ban, a small rectangular table, Cheksang Ban, was placed in front of the large table. A small round table was placed next to a palace matron taster. Yes, everything served was tasted first by the royal taster, in case it was poisoned or inedible. Three other court ladies were assigned to serve the king during each meal. Dishes placement on the large round table in front of the king followed a specific arrangement. The first row was for a bowl of rice and a soup. The next row was for sauces and a lidded empty bowl for inedibles, such as bones. 
Next was grilled foods like seaweed, raw meat or raw fish. The fourth row was for cooked and raw vegetables. The fifth row was for salted dried fish and slow cooked dishes. The last row, furthest from the king, was for chimche or kimchi. Placed on the small round table were rice steamed in red bean water, a soup which was different than what was found on the main table. Tea was also served on this table. The rectangular table had vegetables, eggs and ingredients put in the jonggul, which was cooked on the spot. The meal always started with a spoonful of liquid from the sliced radish in vinegar water, dongchimi. Next, a spoonful of steamed rice was placed in the king's mouth, followed by a spoonful of soup. Next, a little bit of rice and side dishes was fed to the king. Finally, a little bit of rice was put into the soup, which was then completely consumed. The bowl, spoon and chopsticks were then put aside and a new set of spoon and chopsticks were brought to continue the meal. Finally, the king consumed one spoonful of rice immersed in scorched rice tea. Laborers thought that by providing the best ingredients and food to the king, proper governance would follow and the king would give back to the population. Different dishes were prepared depending on the king's health. Sometimes the royal physician would prepare some dishes himself if the king had an ailment. Meals were also seasonal, and ingredients that were thought good for regulating the body's heat were prepared accordingly. Although Joseon kings had absolute power and had access to all they desired, they were generally unhealthy. They often had eye problems, and boils and abscesses appeared on their bodies. Records mention that it's their lack of physical activity and often staying inside that cause all these diseases. As we saw, they didn't need to do anything physical. They were fed and palanquins brought them where they had to go. Most of the king's work was mental labor. He received subjects and envoys while staying seated all day. He also had to read letters in poor lighting conditions. The king didn't stand up to go to the toilet and relieve himself. A portable toilet was brought to him called the Mehuatu. The feces would then be picked up and examined by a doctor to diagnose any illness. It was very important in assessing the state of the ruler's health. It also goes without saying that court ladies would be charged with cleaning up after him. Natural disasters and weather anomalies were cause for concern for the king and officials. Kings could see in those their own lack of virtue and look back on some past actions. Officials were prompted to check if the king was respectful of these anomalies. If not, it could spell doom for the kingdom. I don't doubt that this would have brought a lot of stress to kings. They ate and drank rich food. Records show that kings were overweight had diabetes and high blood pressure. We're far from their depiction in pop culture and even official paintings. Kings were often sick and entrusted others with their work, which in turn gave rise to corruption amongst the elite. Accounts of their sickness can be found in official accounts like the veritable records of the Joseon dynasty. To treat their illnesses, they went to hot springs like Onyang in Gyeonggi-do to relieve their skin disease and improve their blood pressure. Oddly enough, sitting in a hot spring was the only way for a king to receive medical treatment while staying seated. They didn't receive adequate treatment because lying down was not seen as dignified. This might strike us as very odd, but back then, protocol and keeping one's dignity was more important than showing weakness, especially for a king. Mental illness though wasn't treated or even acknowledged. A king couldn't be mentally ill and be the model for a Confucian state. As we have seen, all their interactions were recorded, so kings were very careful to not show their negative sides. But in their own private quarters, 
They could show their anger and hate and even lose control. Some documents like the memoirs of Lady Hegyong and tales of Queen Inhyun show us, however, a better picture of a king or crown prince. For an example of this, we just need to look at the sad story of Crown Prince Sado. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, comment, and hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned for more videos on the rich history of Korea.